Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and in this video we're going to take a quick look at the transponder. This little fella right here. We're going to learn about what it does and how to use it. The transponder is used to help air traffic controller identify you and find you on their radar. This is the transponder in the Cessna 172N that I use and it has a selector knob here of off, standby, exponder, and test. So let's take a look at a different model. So this is the Garmin transponder. It has off, standby, on, altitude, and test. And so it's a little different. So here's another look at a transponder. And it has off, standby, test, ground, on, and altitude. So you can see there's different settings, but they all work the same. So the transponder in your airplane is part of what is called the Air Traffic Control Radar Beacon System. That's a mouthful. So it's sometimes called the Secondary Surveillance Radar, or SSR. Secondary because there are two radar systems. The first or primary radar is kind of like a sonar, if I may use that comparison there. It sends out a signal and that signal is bounced off a surface of the airplane or an object for that matter and returned to the radar system. This primary system can only give the objects distance and bearing and it can't give the altitude or any other information. Hence the need for this secondary surveillance radar system, which consists of a secondary radar system on the ground and the transponder in your airplane. So please bear with me. I'm going to give you another one of my ridiculous drawings to show you what this could look like. I could not find a decent picture uh, that I could legally use, so... I kind of made my own, so please bear with me. All right, quit laughing. Imagine, if you will, that this section down here is the primary radar array, and it sends a signal out, picks up your airplane, signal comes back, and it records your distance and bearing. Up here, we have the secondary array, and this is sending out and receiving the signal from your transponder. So if you were to look down on top of this, it might look something like this. Well, hardly. Anyway, just imagine this thing rotating around, the signal going out and the signal coming back from your transponder. Where the information is sent to a computer and then sent to the monitor for the air traffic controller. Now the idea of a transponder was originally a military system to identify friend or foe so we wouldn't shoot down our own aircraft. And of course now it's used in almost all aircraft to help our skies be safer. Very simply put, this secondary radar system on the ground sends a signal that interrogates or talks to the transponder in your airplane like we see here. Your transponder responds to this interrogation by transmitting a pre-selected code back to the ground unit. The code sent back is the numbers you have entered into your transponder, in this case 1200, zero, zero. and you set those by turning the corresponding knob below each number on this particular model. So 1200 zero, zero is your squawk code. For all my videos, the squawk has been 1200. This code tells the air traffic controller who picks up my transponder that I am flying under visual flight rules. Under VFR, you can pretty much fly wherever you wish, as long as you stay out of restricted airspace and contact the tower of an airport to get permission to enter their airspace. But you are responsible for looking out for their aircraft, and you won't get any help from air traffic controller in most cases. You are not required also to be in contact with a controller under visual flight rules. However, if you file a flight plan intending to fly IFR, 
or instrument flight rules, or if you want flight following when flying in VFR mode, a controller will then give you a squawk code to enter. So I would love to say that's all there is to it, folks. Go out there and have a nice day. But it doesn't work that way. You don't just dial in your code and select transponder and off you go. There's more to it than that. Remember I showed you those different looks on transponders, different models? Well, there are three modes right now for transponders. We have a mode A, a mode C, and a mode S. And so let's go over those. Let's start with mode A. Remember on our video in pre-flight, we started the airplane, we got the avionics going, and we set the transponder to standby. So in standby mode, the transponder is on and ready to go because you want to get it warmed up. And we set the code to 1200, which is, of course, visual flight rules. Now we're going to keep it on standby until we're ready to take off. Once we're ready to take off, we are going to switch it to transponder. Now that's the only setting we have on this particular transponder. So this is a mode A transponder. The only thing this transponder is going to send back to the secondary radar system on the ground is the code, the squawk code 1200. It will not send any other information. While it's perfectly legal right now to fly with a mode A transponder, this is going to change most likely. Regulations are getting tighter and they just need more information going to the air traffic controllers. So if you only have a mode A transponder, there are places right now that you just cannot fly with only a mode A transponder. Now, I'm not going to get into all that regulation stuff. That's just beyond the scope of this video. So let's take a look at a mode C transponder. So this is a Garmin mode C transponder. So we have off, standby, on, and altitude. So standby, like I said before, you're just getting it warmed up. It's ready to go. It is not going to respond to any interrogation. When you put it in the on position, it'll work as a mode A only transponder. In other words, it won't send any altitude information. When you switch over to altitude, now the transponder will send the altitude information and maybe some other information to the radar system for the air traffic controller to see. So he can see more information about you and your airplane, not just there's a guy flying VFR, but he'll know your altitude, and maybe some other information is sent along with that, too. We're not going to get into all of that. So those are the only two modes we're going to discuss in this video. So let's just go over the actual use of a mode C transponder. So let's take a look at the transponder that comes with X-Planes Cessna 172 SP. So here is yet another look at a transponder. Here you see we have standby, on, altitude, and off. Now to change the, the squawk code, you just press the numbers. So if we wanted three, four, five, and six, we've just set our squawk to three, four, five, six. And if we want one, two, zero, zero, we just put those numbers back in. Pretty cool. So we also have over here the ident. When you click the ident button, this sends a signal to the radar system and on the screen for the air traffic controller, it'll give a different look to your little blip on his radar screen. And that just helps him locate you. Now you don't just go clicking on the old ident button anytime you want. No, the controller is going to ask you. He might be really busy and he wants to find you quickly on his radar screen, so he will ask you to ident. And then, and only then, do you click the ident button. So now let's go over the process here. We've gone through our pre-flight, we've got everything set, we're ready to go, and we are going to fly VFR. So we start up our airplane, we get things going, and we start out on standby. We taxi over to the runway. We're getting ready to go. We'll set our transponder to altitude. 
And that's all we really need to do for our VFR flying. We don't do anything else. We take off and do whatever we're going to do. So now let's just say we're doing the same thing, but we are going to fly a specific route. We filed a flight plan and we need to contact air traffic control and, and get our information. And without going into a lot of detail, they will give you a squawk code to enter and you will enter that code into your transponder, two, three, four, or five, and you're set to go. So you do the same thing, right? You're in standby, you taxi over to the runway, you click on altitude, and you take off. But in IFR flying, you are always going to be in contact with the air traffic controllers and they're going to switch you over maybe to center and you're going to have them follow you and they may give you another code depending on just what they're doing so when IFR flying you will always be in contact with somebody and they may change your squawk code from time to time probably not but there's always that possibility so that's a lot more information that I thought I was going to be giving here in this tutorial I thought this one would be pretty quick but it turned out to be just a little more complicated. So basically you saw how to use the transponder. You put in the number that the controllers will give you. If you're flying VFR, it's going to be 1200 and you're going to be on standby. Then you switch over to altitude when you take off. This is for mode A and for mode C. I'm not going to get into mode S. Um, I don't even think it's uh, simulated in X-Plane yet or even if ever will be. Basically, mode S is just a little more complicated. It sends a lot more information than just altitude. Plus, mode C is limited to just a few numbers. 4096, I think, is the number of codes that they can generate. So code S has the ability to handle much larger number of codes and it also sends a lot more information other than altitude. It could send uh, the fuel on board, your speed, and all other kinds of information that's on the airplane. I'm not really sure what it covers. It may even cover how much change the pilot has in his pocket. I don't know a whole lot about Mode S. So that's it for my not-so-short tutorial on the transponder. If you like this, please click the Like button. If you would like to leave a comment or send me a message, that would be great. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.